Okay, so so let's keep going. So we so we talk we have to talk about ergodic theorems. And again, if you still don't have access to the uh, fields LMS, you, you, you send an email to Xu Chan and he will add you. So is there anyone who has that problem that you know some people have been added? Okay, so what are ergodic theorems? So we said that the setting in general, the setting would be that you have a measure preserving system. So a set, sigma algebra, probability measure and transformation. So this would be a measure preserving system. And we have a, so there's two types of theorems. So one, so the first two theorems of von Neumann and Birkhoff have to do with the function from X to R, which is usually called an observable. Okay, and so, and so rec recall that whenever you have an observable, you can, you can define the Birkhoff sum. which is just SNF, which is just the sum of F composed with T along the orbit. So usually, traditionally, we start with time zero, meaning F of today. We don't apply T to N minus one to make sure that there's N terms. Okay, and so the classical ergodic theorems tells us that there is a limit if you take this sum divided by N, there is a limit. So there's still a... So, so the von Neumann theorem, which we discussed last time, without really complete proof, but more or less give an idea, is that if f is in L two, then yes, then there exists f tilde a bar which is invariant such that f bar composed with T equals F bar, uh, also in L2, such that S and F divided by N converges to F bar in L2. So this is the first earliest ergodic theorem, which, as we said, has this nice interpretation in terms of uh, projection in this Hilbert space. So L2 of XP is a Hilbert space. And the space of invariant functions is a subset, subspace, as I said. So, so of course, so there are many, many theorems of this flavor. So this is L2T, and the whole thing is L2. The, the flavor is that you take a point, so this is zero, you take a vector in the space, and you project, project down. So this is F, and this is F1. So, so this is nice because you, you have this, this geometric interpretation. Now, if you go to L1, well, it's a bit less uh, geometric in the sense that in a Banach space, then, okay, uh, the, the orthogonal projection is not always, uh, yeah, the word orthogonal doesn't mean much. So you can define maybe a projection, but it's a bit less transparent, but the same theorem holds and in fact, a much better convergence holds, which is almost sure convergence. So the Birkhoff's theorem says the following, that if you start with F in L1, so, so just the absolute value of F is integral rather than the absolute value of F square, uh, then again, there exists F bar in L1 such that F bar composed with T equals F bar, and most importantly, S and F over N converges to F bar. And here's the most important word in this theorem is almost surely. Okay, and in L1, that's also true. So the upgrade here is not just to go from L2 to L1, which I bet it would be some upgrade, but I think the, the really big upgrade is that we go to all machine. So again, what does it mean all machine? It means that there is a set, a set, you know, X naught in X, such that it has full probability, 
and such that yeah for every x in x naught the limit this limit exists of s and n of x over n exists So this is the most important uh, point of this theorem, that it's not just on average. So here, you, in order to say that the convergence in L2, you're taking the difference between this Birkhoff average and this function, and you take the in, some integral of it. So there's some average, further uh, space averaging procedure. So here, there is no space averaging procedure, it means there is in a, your universe, okay, maybe you cannot predict the destiny of every point in your universe, but there is a very big space, like space of <laughs> measure, full measure. Of course, the complement could be dense. I mean, topologically, things could be weird still. But from the probabilistic point of view, with probability one, you take a point in here, and you take the iterate, and you, you this average does indeed exist. So that's... That's a big difference because it's much easier because you can, whenever you have to do something with the system, you can just take this generic trajectory. So some, this X that satisfies this and this trajectory has all the good properties and, 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 and you can work with that much without taking any integral. So by the way, there's a pretty much pretty obvious corollary because, so this is called the ergodic theorem. So the system need not be ergodic, but you see, what do we get out of this is a function which is invariant. But now what do we know about invariant functions for ergodic systems? They're only constant, right? So if, if T is ergodic on top of that, well then F bar, has to be constant. And so, almost surely. So what it means is that as a corollary, if, if the system is ergodic, you do this averaging procedure, and the result of the averaging procedure does not depend on, on the starting point. So, so for all, so there exists some, some Cs, just some real number, such that for all x in x naught, this 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 convergence, this average converges to some number. This number is a unique is unique property of the system now. It's not a property of the starting point anymore. Yes. Can one differ annoyance from their top? Well, of course, I mean, <laughs> especially from this one. So, yeah, so there's two answers. So, yeah, of course, if you converge in L1, so you will converge in L2, I think. But then the other thing is, yeah, you can integrate, right? This is almost your convergence. Yeah, now if you do the, if you do the uh, dominate, yeah, by dominated convergence, basically, you can you can integrate on both sides. I mean, there is maybe some 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 step in between, but but basically that's yeah yeah no no that that's strong, strictly stronger statement. Yeah, still it's a bit unfair <laughs> that this guy's theorem was not published because because this guy did, didn't like him. So that was an interesting point. There's a very interesting there's an interesting uh, survey by Vitali Bergelson about the history of Gaudi theorem. Okay, now what, what's next? So this is by far the most famous version, but in our course, we, we will need often even a stronger version of that, which is the subadditive ergodic theorem, which is Kingman's theorem. So that's a bit later, in the 60s. I think, or like, so, so, okay. So, 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 so to look at the subadditive ergodic theorem, we have to, Look at the notion of a subadi typical cycle. So now we are not only ta talking about um, 
sums of, so you don't have an, a function anymore that you're just summing over a function, but you're summing something slightly more complicated than a function, namely a cost cycle. What is a cost cycle? So a cost cycle, so a cost cycle, well, it is a function that traditionally we denote by A instead of F, but kind of plays a role of that. So it's a function from N times uh, our, our space X to, to R. So now, instead of looking at the same function and composing, looking at function today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, every day, so this n is the time parameter, every day we're allowed to change function, but change the function in, in a controlled way, otherwise it will be, okay. And it's subadditive, and is subadditive, so subadditive cost cycle, if, yeah, so if A, the following is true. So if you do A at the time N plus M, starting at the point X, this is less or equal than A N X plus A M T N X. So for every N and M, zero and for every x in x. So you see, what is the subadditivity property is you, you look at, at, at the function at time n plus m. On the other hand, you can look at the function times n. And then from the point x, you, you see, uh, wait, wait, wait. Right. Yeah, that's that's literally right. Yeah, that's right. So right. So 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 what is going on here? So it's like I start with the point X. So and I I apply the dynamics, and I get T N X. And so the point is. The cost cycle at times n plus m starting from x is comparable to the cost cycle from starting at x but from time n plus the cost cycle from t and x starting from m. So the obvious example is what we already saw. So if you do a and x to be f of t and x. So the function after n steps, well, it's obvious. Now let, let's check, right? So, so, so what does it mean? What is n plus n plus m x is f of p n plus m of x? Sorry, this is the sum. Sorry, so, so let's see. It's the sum. The sum of f composed with t i from i equals zero to at x. So, so if you do this, this is the sum from i equals zero to n plus m minus one of f of t i of x. And this sum can be decomposed as the sum in the first n steps and the sum in the other steps. So this is the sum from i equals zero to n minus one of f ti of x. And, and then what? Well, the next one is the sum for the next steps for from n to n plus n minus one. All right, so if we call this s and f of x, as we just did before, well, you see that this, you literally have a quality, not just inequality, but literally a quality.
right? So you have that this guy is what? Is S and F of X by definition. And this one is S and S M F, but starting from T to the N X. And this is this is the same as s n plus n n plus f of x. It's just sum. So, so the the cycle notion kind of wants to model what what happens if you're taking a sum over the orbit, but instead of having an equality, you can replace it with inequality. That's the that's the the difference. And now we we can indeed study a similar thing. So instead of Sn here, right? Now the, the new ergodic average will be the average of A and X divided by N. So that's the same type of ergodic average. And so let's let's um, let's state the theorem. So this is Kingman's theorem. So it says that if you take let A be a subadditive co-cycle, on, on the measure preserving system, so on X, A, P, T, a measure preserving system, usual before. And what do we need to, to assume? Suppose well, suppose it's integrable, which means that a n for each n, the function a n, the function as a function of x is in L1 for every n. So this is an integrability condition. which we're... And also, we need to impose something that assures that the limit does not go to negative infinity. So the second condition is, is the following, is that the infimum over n or 1 over n, the integral, of a and x b p x is bigger than negative infinity. Yeah, I mean, in practice, most of the cycles that we're going to study are, are positive valued. So this this is going to be trivial true. This is just to avoid that the, the, the average goes to negative infinity. OK. Yeah, these are, this are the only two conditions. So basically, just an integrability condition. So then, for almost every x in x, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n x over n exists. And again, more or less like what we described before, we can we can call this a bar of x. So if A is additive, so you have equality, this is literally the same as, as Birkhoff's theorem. But here we can replace additive with sub additive. That's, that's the only issue, but it's it's big big issue and Again, a bar composed with T equals a bar. So it's 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 also in here. And again, the, the good thing here is that if again if T is ergodic, a bar is constant for same reason. So if T ergodic, then a bar is constant, almost sure.
Any questions? Okay, so, so let's have a look at the most important example, in fact. So we will see the proof of this theorem, but before doing that, let's see at, let's look at the most important example that is the existence of drifts for random walks. So the application, the most important application to random walks, there are many, but certainly this is the first one. The application to random walks is, is the existence of the drift. And so what is the setup here? Well, the setup here is you take, again, let's take G accountable group and mu, a probability measure on G. Okay. And then once we have that, we, we can consider that X, let omega P, this is the space that we defined as time, be the path space, meaning that the elements of omega are sequences, are the sequences W1, W2, W3 that represent the locations of the random walk. And NP is the natural probability distribution uh, that expresses the fact that you're actually doing this random walk. Okay. And then we assume, so assume G, yeah, there is an action, G acts by isometries on a metric space that now, since we already had X before, let's call it Y even though probably later in the course we will call it X in applications, but let's call it Y. So what does it mean again that, you know, for each element in G, you can, at, at every point in Y, you can define G, 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 Y. G, Y is another point in Y, so that the, every element in G preserves distances in this metric space, okay? Okay, and you take a base point. Let's call it small y in y, a uh, base point at some point. So the picture is picture that I drew many times, even though the base point we call it down y, w1 y, w2 y, wn y, and so forth. So what do we want to look at? We want to look at the distance, distance function, which is given by this metric space, okay? So how do we look at the distance? Well, we define the distance cost cycle Okay, and how do you define it? Let's call it D N omega. So omega is, is an infinite sequence. So what is D N omega? Well, it's just the distance between the base point and the end step of the walk. So omega here means is a sequence It's a point in this big omega. It's a sequence of random paths. So it's the trajectory of, the, of, of, of this random walk. And yeah, you just take the distance between the end step and the first step, I like that. Just look at that. This is a metric space, so everything is, is well defined. So we, we don't need any um, anything else. 
So the other thing is, okay, so is this a closed cycle and is it integrable? Well, so there's two things to check. So the, the first thing is that, um, yeah, we need another condition to make sure that it's integrable and it is the following. So we define, we say, we say the, the Randall walk has, so the Randall walk driven by, this is the usually means we start with G mu has finite first moment if for some for some y in y what how, so what do you do you take the distance between y and gy and you're integrating with respect to mu. So, but this is a countable group. So we can even just say that the sum of this times mu g is finite. So you see mu as a measure on g. And Yeah, and then you're taking the distance from y to gy, and you want this time to be finite. So what is the meaning of this being finite first moment? It means that, you see, this is a step length of the walk. So you do one step from, from y to w1. g is like w1. So the first step could, you know, but on average, the first step has, fine, has, has this finite length. Because if in the easiest case, mu has finite support. So you have only finite many choices. So that would be not, not a problem. But in general, you could have more than finitely many choices, but you just make it so that the average weight converges. Are there any questions? Can you actually see the board? Everybody seems quite calm. <laughs> very calm which is not a good sign i think so i don't know i i, I feel like it the light is not so good to be honest. Wait, maybe we can... Okay, anyways, yeah, no, there, there's are there other questions here because Okay, so okay, so now what 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 do you want to say? We want to say that this is a cost cycle. And to prove that there is an average that this distance when you divide by n converges to a limit. So that that it would be, be the existence of the joint. Okay, so let me let me state it. So first of all, no one asked the question that everybody asks at this point. So this is not a good sign. Oh, yes. That's not, not the same question that I was expecting, but yes. That's a good question. Yes. So, so an example without finite first moment, yes, you could say that the probability that you see that, uh, yeah, so let's say mu on, 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 on Z, so let's say G equals Z. So mu of, right, T to the K equals one over K squared. The question is whether it's independent of Y, that's right. So <laughs> I'll tell you the answer, yes. So yeah, so this is, yeah, so this would be an example because, so you see that the pro, you, you can make a really, really huge jump here with probability one of our k squared. So you see what is the, the expectation of the drift. So you see the sum of mu two to the k 
times two to the k. <laughs> So this is uh, this is enormous. So this is a sum of two to the k over over k squared, which which is infinite. So it's possible, yeah, because because you, you see, yeah, this the, you can make enormous jumps. Of course, if you make reasonable jumps, then yeah, even well, in fact, even even simpler also. You could say, yeah, even mu of k, I guess, because one over k squared still still doesn't work, right? <laughs> because you, you take the sum over mu k times k is sum over one over k, and you still have it. So, so yeah, there are examples. So yeah, so the the other remark would be. That, uh, yeah. So, so if if this holds for one, for one y, it holds for every y. If star holds for some y, it holds for any y prime in y. So this is a good trick that I want to. to Explain independently of this particular application. So you see what what happens. So what's the difference? So if you take the diff distance between y prime and g y prime, this is not the same necessarily as the distance between y and g y. But you can do there is a triangle in a cold. Right, so you can do this is at most distance between y prime and y plus distance between y and gy plus distance between gy and gy prime. And now we can use the isometry property here. So you can remove the g because this is an isometry. So this is less than the distance between y g y plus two distance between y and y prime. So whenever I give you y and y prime, yeah, so now if you integrate on both sides, well, the, this integral is finite. This is just a constant, does not depend on g. Yeah, another way of writing this is to write the, the integral. This is like the integral of d y g y dem u g. So if you're an analyst, maybe you prefer this. But in the end, it's just the sum. So right plus plus well, you take the integrate of this, but that the the this integral with respect to a probability measure. So it's this. So the integral. With respect of d y prime, g y prime, d mu g is less or equal to this. Okay, so okay, so now let 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 me state the proposition. Which once you have the King of Zagadic theorem is not that complicated, but it's it's definitely a fundamental proposition. And you talk about random walks and groups, which is the following. So let G mu, again, a group with the measure, so you, we call it a measure group. And this is acting by isometries. On a metric space on y d. So if yeah, if the first fi the finite is the first, if the first moment is finite, so you see the first moment is a property of all these things, in fact. 
because it depends on, on the measure because you're doing the integral, also depends on the distance. I mean, you could, you could have a group that act on different spaces and on different spaces, the first moment could be finite or not, depending on the type of action that you have. But given these two things, you can say if the finite, if the first moment is finite, then there exists some L. This is a constant, could be zero or positive, such that for almost every Omega, so sample path. Yeah, so the limit as n goes to infinity of the distance between y and w and y divided by n equals this number L. So you see, this is the first property, the first numerical characteristic, the first number that is associated to a random walk. Because this number does not depend on the path that you're choosing. Ex well, again, it does, but for a full measure set of paths, you get always the same number. Okay, so the definition, so we call, we call L the drift. So I, I usually use the name drift or rate of escape. or speed, in fact, it's literally just the speed of the random walk. Do we know anything about the spectrum of L depending on the distance? That's a very good question and not an easy question at all, but yeah. So there are cases where people can say, oh, for every L you can find a random walk. There are theorems like this. No, no, I, I just rather like the rational regression. This number is extremely rare, rarely a rational number. Yeah, the, the relation between L and the generators is extremely complicated and, and, and transcendental. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll talk more about that. But I mean, in general, computing L is really hard. I mean, numerically, for say, like matrices, there are good uh, computer programs, <laughs> like algorithms that you can that can give you this number at up to many digits, but you don't, you are not expected to find a close four for, for this L. So the reason I asked the last thing is, I thought that, for example, transition things are always- I understand. Fresh. Yeah, but here you're combining different elements with different axes, so that things are not al aligned. So it, it, it's complicated, but yeah, I think, but I think there are some, not not trivial theorems at all that might, they might say, okay, maybe if you fix G and for every L, you can find some measure mu that maybe gives you this as a drift. And in certain conditions, I think this this could, this theorem uh, exists. But yeah, so L is a function, as I said, is a function of many things, notably both of mu and D. So if you change either of those, L, L can change. But at least the one characteristic, which is a bit more robust, would be whether L is zero or not. And this is already a very important distinction. Okay, so okay, so we can prove this proposition given the, the, the theorem. So that's not so complicated. Okay, so the, the proof is, again, we show that this co-cycle is additive, is sub-additive and integrable. So, so again, we take D and omega as distance between Y and W and Y. Okay, I want to say that is a sub-additive. Well, cycle. So how, how, how do we show that? Remember, what is the dynamics here? So remember, so with respect to so the system is omega p and t. T is the t again is the shift in the space of increments. Remember, this is the important thing. T is the space that shifts the g's, not the w's. <laughs> so this is 
shift of increments because otherwise it's not true. <laughs> so the thing is again, the 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 or the preserve the, the measure preserving nature is true for for this shift. Okay, so so now literally we, we just apply everything. Okay, so, so what do we need to, to prove? We need to prove that D n plus W n plus M W is less or equal than D n omega plus D M T n omega. Okay. Okay, let's write it. So this is the distance between W n plus M Y and Y, basically. The question is, is less than the distance between W and Y and Y plus what? Okay, so what is going on here? So if you think about it, so you have omega, let's write it as G1. Let's look at the G coordinates. So we are shifting by N, N steps. So this is Gn plus one, so forth. So we are, so we are applying T. So we are shifting this. So T and omega starts from Gn plus one up to Gn plus m and so forth. So what are we doing here? And what is W? W is a product of the first, however, of them. So this literally is the following, is the product of the first N, M entries of this new sequence. So this is G, N plus one, G, N plus M, acting on Y, Y. You see, this is what, what this operation is. So that's the interesting part because somehow it's not it, it's it's very nice because it it literally just works but <laughs> but um, yeah it's not you know it's not hard but it's, uh, somehow all the pieces of the puzzle fit together so so let's see so so why is is this true So is, is this inequality there true? So why is it true? So what do we need to use? We need to use two things, actually. Yeah, the triangle inequality seems always to be useful. And also here, yeah, exactly. So we want to use the fact that we are acting by isometries, right? So you see, okay, we, we can read, Rewrite this exactly like that. Or, yeah, yeah. And this one, since this is isometry, we can multiply, we can multiply by Wn on both sides. So if we multiply by Wn, which is G1, Gn, we have G1, Gn, Right? So you have G1, Gn, Gn plus 1, Gn plus m, y, and then here G1, Gn, y, like that. And so this is literally D, W, N, y, y plus D, W, N plus m, y, W, N, why? And of course, this is bigger than distance between W and plus M. Why? Why? This is literally the triangle inequality. So this one just works by using the two things the triangle and inequality, and the fact that this group is acting by us. Okay, the second thing is the subadditivity. 
By the way, we, let's let's remark the other thing. Suppose that if if a cost cycle is positive, so a n of x is positive for every n and for every x, which is the case for this drift, for this distance, because distances are, 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 are non-negative, then that it is enough, it is enough to check that a one x is in L one to show for a and x is in L one for every n. So why is that? Yeah, by the sub additivity because. Why? Because, yeah, by, by, by induction, because think about this. So if you do A of n plus 1 x, this is less than A n x plus A 1 T n x. Now, if you integrate on both sides, so if you integrate in dp on 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 both on all sides now we observe that exactly that 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 p is t invariant so we can kill this this t right so this would be integral of a and x dp plus integral of a 1x dp so by induction if we know that this is finite, then okay, and okay, we start with n equals one. This is finite, this is finite, and this is finite, and, and so forth. So by induction, the integral of a and x dp is finite for every n. So that's Okay, so okay, so now why is a one integrable? Well, in this case, if you do the integral of a one, which is d in this d one omega dp omega, this we have to check. Well, what it what is this? Well, this is the integrable uh, integral of d y. W1 or yeah, W1Y dp, let's say like this in omega. So this you're integrating with respect to omega, which is an infinite sequence, but this this function only depends on the first entry. Right? So what's the definite what's the distribution of the first entry? Well, it's mu by, by definition. So this is the same as the integral over g of dy. G y d mu g. And this literally is the definition of, of finite first moment. Yeah. Finite first moment. Okay. So so we are good. So we are good because we, we have showed that. We we can apply the Kingman's theorem. So by Kingman's, the limit for almost every omega, which is an infinite path, the limit as n goes to infinity of distance between y w and y over n exists. We can call it L of omega exists. Now, the other thing we just have to realize is indeed that this is a constant. And why is this a constant? 
yeah, but I agree with it. But since since T with the shift is ergodic, there exists an L constant such that L equals L L of omega almost sure. So that's it. So this proof is not not so complicated to be honest, but um, it's a good way to to see that you really. And you see already that you know the way we're acting. You know already we see why we're multiplying elements from the right, but we're acting on the left, which seems a bit counterintuitive. But already in this first example, you see that if you did the opposite, then uh, you would have. Uh, you know, you would have a bigger problem because you cannot even apply this. Okay, I guess it's actually time to stop. So why not? So we started at 10. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Are there any questions? Yes. So, like here, like the, it's kind of like the, the metric space is not part of the dynamic system. Right? No, the, the the dynamical system is just the space in the in the group. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are two dynamics, right? There is a random dynamics on the group, and there is a dynamics of the group action. Yes, <laughs> so both, of course, uh, are useful. But uh, yeah, for this theorem, we don't use the the dynamics of the group action. And that's good because this means that the theorem is always true. Otherwise you would have to use yeah. more sophisticated properties of the group action, which we will at, at some point. For instance, you need, for instance, if X is a hyperbolic, if, if, if Y it would be a hyperbolic space, then you can show L is positive. Otherwise it's not gonna be true. So, so for example, yeah, so yeah, yeah good. No, we didn't. It's not hard to prove, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can think about it. Yeah, it's, it's not that hard to prove. But no. no, I agree with you. Yeah, by the way, on Monday at five, I, I said I said that I, I would have off hours, so if you're interested. On Zoom, I I put on the, on the, yeah, on the portal, the Zoom link, but. I think you should be able to see it. Okay, good. So see you next week.